Let's assume we have this hard to edit raw file with super bright highlights in the sky and super deep shadows in the foreground. Using the Adobe Neutral Profile we can still fix things using only Lightroom. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description and here is how it's done. Just for the record I already cropped the image quite a bit because it was a bit tilted and we don't need that much around these waterfalls. Now as always we're going to start with the basic adjustments so let's open up the basic panel and right away we want to choose the Adobe Neutral Profile. This right here. If you can't find the Neutral Profile in this list click on the Browse button, choose the Adobe Raw Profiles down below and in this list you should find Adobe Neutral. All right, then let's close the profile browser. Now with the profile setup, you can already see things have changed a bit. The Adobe Neutral profile will give us a more flat image. That means the profile will add less contrast to the scene and this gives us more control over everything ourselves. The next step is to try and recover details from the shadows. So let me bring up the exposure. I'm going to raise it a lot until the point where I can spot some first details in the very darkest parts of the foreground. This is looking pretty decent, but of course, because we are increasing the exposure, we are also making the highlights brighter. And that might be a problem because at this point we are losing details in the sky. But don't worry, we are not clipping yet. So what we can do is to bring down the highlights. And just like that, we will get back all these clouds in the sky like this. Perfect. At this point, it's looking much better. Also looking at the histogram, but you can still see a bit of clipping in the very darkest parts. So we still need to fix those. Therefore, we have the shadows and the black sliders. So let's simply start by raising the shadows, getting out more and more details this way. And I also want to raise the blacks. Raising the blacks will fix the clipping if you go high enough, but of course this will lessen the contrast dramatically. So at some point we want to reintroduce a bit of contrast. Although raising the blacks creates a very soft look and if you want to create dreamy images that would be a pretty good start. And we can take a look at the original raw file. You can see we have so much more details in every area of the image and that's exactly what we want. And the Adobe Neutral Profile was really helping with that. As I said, we are losing a lot of contrast here, so we want to reintroduce some. I'm using the Presence tab down below to do that. Of course, the texture will only help with the sharpness. Still, I want this image to look sharp, so I'm going to increase it a bit. Then the clarity will help with the midtones contrast. So let's bring it up a bit as well. And I'm using Dehaze, which is a really nice way to reintroduce some more contrast. Okay. One thing the Adobe Neutral profile also does is to reduce the overall saturation a lot. You can see it in this image, we are lacking a lot of colors. So how do we counter that? I'm going to simply raise the vibrance. And this is not enough in this case, so I'm also going to raise the saturation quite a bit. I also want to work on the white balance. I do think I want to make the base image just a little bit colder, so I'm going to bring down the temperature. My goal is to have some very subtle blue tones in these waterfalls. So bringing down the temperature like this really helps with that. Now that's it for the base image, but we can go a little crazy on the shot with a bit of masking. So let's open up the masking panel. For this scene, what will really help is the objects selection mask once more. The first thing I want to change is the sky. In this case, the sky is kind of hard to target. The sky mask won't work, but we can use the objects selection mask. Make sure to change the mode to rectangle select because with that you will get better results. And now I'm going to draw a rectangle around the sky. And since you have this much contrast between sky and the dark foreground, you see Lightroom has an easier time selecting the sky like this. Now I don't want to make the whole sky darker. I want to have a bright spot right above these mountains to make it look more interesting. I'm going to subtract a radial gradient. Let's take out a big chunk from right here. All right, I think like this should be fine. Now what I'm going to do to the rest of the sky is to bring down the exposure, making everything quite a bit darker this way. 
Then I want to bring up the contrast, trying to get out some more cloud structure this way. And let's bring down the saturation because I really don't want to have some heavy blue saturation going on in here. Much better. Okay, now we can already see the glowing spot, but we can further enhance it. So I'm going to use another object mask. And again, I'm just drawing a rectangle around that part of the sky. Again, we get a perfect selection. This time, I want to make the bottom part above the mountain brighter. So I'm going to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with, and let's choose radial gradient. Now I'm going to target the same area which I have subtracted before. And that's where I kind of want to have a sunset look applied. That means I want to make it a lot warmer and brighter. We can start by increasing the whites, which will make the highlights brighter, obviously. We can also increase the blacks, just brightening up some of these areas some more. And then to introduce colors, I'm again using the white balance settings, bringing up the temperature a lot. That's looking pretty nice. Maybe let's bring down the radial gradient just a little bit. And then I want to bring up the saturation so we can nicely see the colors in here. All right, looking good. I still think the right, the left side of the sky is a bit too bright. Let me target it one more time. Let's create another objects mask, draw a rectangle around the sky, and let's subtract a linear gradient, taking out all the sky from the right side like this. Okay, and then again, let's bring down the exposure. Maybe even increase the contrast, but that should be enough. I also want to add a glowing spot to the sky. Let me create a radial gradient for that. And the glowing spot needs to be over the brightest part of the sky. Otherwise, it doesn't make much sense. So let me place it right here. And how do I introduce that glow? I'm going to bring up the blacks. Since we're overlapping the foreground with these mountains, increasing the blacks will make those brighter and thus we will create the illusion of glow. So that's looking good. I do think I want to bring up the temperature even further. So this glowing spot has the most warmth of the sky. I think it makes sense this way. I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. Just need to be careful to not overdo it with the exposure since bringing down dehaze will make the area brighter. As you can see right here, I'm also going to bring down the clarity to make this area look a bit softer. Just like this. Wonderful. Maybe let's make this radial gradient just a little bit thinner. Okay. Of course, we cannot only work on the sky. We can also work, work on the rest of the image. And again, I'm using the objects mask to select the sky first. And now all we need to do is to invert this mask. And just like that, we get a perfect selection for the foreground and the landscape in the distance. So what can we do here? We, I want to make it brighter, but at the same time, I want to add more contrast. So I'm going to start by bringing up the exposure first, making the foreground brighter. Just a little more. All right. And at the same time, let me add a lot of contrast to give the foreground more punch. Okay. I also want to bring down the shadows. Now bringing down the shadows, the risk of cl introducing clipping in the darkest areas is rather slim, so we can safely do that. However, you don't want to bring down the blacks because that's where you introduce clipping to them. So instead of bringing down the blacks, I'm going to very carefully raise them just a little bit to be safe with those very dark spots of the foreground. And I also want to add some more whites, which again will help introducing some more punch to the foreground. Perfect. We could also make it look a bit sharper using some texture and some clarity. All right, that's looking great. Then let me roughly target the water right here in this cave. And I want to bring down the saturation because I will later work with the blue colors a little more. So in this way, I prevent over saturation in this area. I do think I can also bring up the contrast some more, giving the water a bit more punch. And that's it. Okay, we could also work on the waterfalls. So let me create a object mask, an object mask, and I'm going to draw a rectangle around the first waterfall. 
here let me also bring down the saturation a bit and i want to introduce texture and clarity to make the waterfall pop to select the other one i'm going to add another object mask and just draw a rectangle around this one as well and that's it so there we have the image after the masking adjustments let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after looks so much better let's work on the colors and here we can improve things a little further uh, let me expand the color mixer first i want to work on the saturation i want to make the warmer tones more saturated that means i'm going to bring up the orange tones i'm also going to bring up the yellow tones and the green tones okay now i want to bring down the aqua tones which will mainly affect the water and of course i also want to bring down the blue tones just a bit like this at this point the image might look strange but don't worry we are going to use split toning and the calibration settings to further emphasize the colors so let's start with the split toning in the color grading tab i'm going to start with the highlights first and here i want to further work on that sunset look that means i want to make the highlights a lot warmer using a warm hue so I think somewhere around here in the red orange range and i'm going to pump up the saturation and you will see how this will nicely affect the sky just like this of course this will make the whole scene a little bit too warm so we want to counter that i'm going to use the midtones for this set up the hue to a cold color tone let's go somewhere around here and now let's bring up the saturation and bring in some color balance this way so we have the colder tones of the midtones against the warmer tones of the sky and that's exactly what i want we can further improve this using the shadows again i'm going with a cold color tone right around here and bring up the saturation for the shadows i'm only using minimal amounts of saturation because otherwise it would look weird very fast okay but that's it for the split toning now let's also head into the calibration tab here i'm always playing around with these sliders but the first thing i'm doing with all of my images is to bring down the blue primary hue so let's do this i'm going to drop it quite a bit this will alter the colors in a very pleasing way as you can see i also want to raise the saturation to make the colors pop okay now what i'm doing as well is to play around with these other sliders and let's start with the red i'm going to bring up the hue here and let's also bring up the saturation okay then let's bring down the green hue and also bring up the saturation all right i think that's it for the color grading and now the only thing left to do is the sharpening so let's open up the details panel i'm going to bring down the radius increase the details add a bit of masking while holding down the alt key so we can actually see where the sharpening will be applied and then let's increase the amount of sharpening actually of course we need to clean up this image so we could do this in lightroom but i really don't want to use this slow performing method instead let me do this in photoshop i'm going to right click on the image go to edit in and choose open as smart object in photoshop i'm going to duplicate this layer first by hitting ctrl j then we need to rasterize it to be able to work on it and first let me get rid of my girlfriend right here i'm going to use the lesser tool I'm going to create a rough selection around her actually no let me use the remove tool i'm just going to brush around her like this okay and let's see what will happen perfect then of course i want to get rid of that water spray producing these very visible and very distracting dots i'm going to use the spot healing brush for that just painting over all these things where i can find them also want to get rid of that snow patch because it's super bright and distracting as well all right and that's a clean up version of this image so i hope this little tutorial on the adobe neutral profile will be helpful for your upcoming underexposed images as always if you have questions left or if you want to add anything let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video